Gentoo Linux was one of the hardest distributions I ever had to install. After getting a temporary extra laptop from my friend, which is a pure AMD machine, I decided to give it another try. And this is what happened. Before we begin, I want to mention that now I have two laptops. All the screen recording in this video are captured by a video capture card from the Gentoo Live CD on my secondary machine into OBS Studio on my main machine. Instead of taking full responsibility for my failure last time, I was blaming my phone for not being a good device to read the manual from, as I made some critical errors using it. People in the comments suggested I use the live CD from another distribution so I could read, copy, and paste properly from a browser, which I thought was a brilliant idea. So I started my laptop with another distribution's ISO without any research. And when I went to Gentoo's website, I found out that Gentoo is now officially providing their own version of Live CD with the graphical interface. So I downloaded that one instead, put it on my Ventoy, and started the journey again. The first thing I did was the disk partitioning and formatting. It is pretty straightforward, like any other distributions. Starting from Nix OS, I decided not to have any swap partition anymore. And I also went for ButterFS instead of ext4 for the root partition. There is no other difference I do here compared to the manual. It's a pure copy and paste work. Moving on to the next page, stage 3. There were two things that made me hesitate when picking up the stage 3 package. The first one was to pick between OpenRC and SystemD. There was this one person commenting on my last Gen2 video saying that is that really what you can do after 10 years of using Linux? Well, yeah, I fell miserably with Gen 2 even with 10 years of using Linux. I was too ambitious that I wanted to change everything. Of course, my result was crap. So this time, I will try to be smart. So as a smart person now, the manual says that it is not as complete for System D. So I just went with OpenRC. The second hesitation was I see that they have the desktop profile this time. Either I wasn't paying attention last time, or it wasn't there last year. But again, as an intelligent people this time, desktop profile was a no-brainer for me. Next, I changed the make option. Given O3 is no causing issue, I stayed with O2. Then, I changed the job numbers to 8, as I have 16 gigs of RAM. After that, I changed the mirrors to Canadian ones, then the eBuild repository as well. I set up the DNS, mount the file system, did a web sync and sync. I made sure the right profile was selected again and took a deep breath and merged the whole world. Whew, moment of truth. With the whole world emerged as well as my dinner sorted out, I decided to soldier on. I did some configuration changes for the time zone and locale. I also went to Arch Wiki to copy the Chinese locale here. And finally, I reached the kernel customization. Hey, I'm smarter now. So I didn't even look at the manual customization part this time and went directly to the gen kernel. Well, joking aside, I did take some time to read the firmware section in the beginning of this page and install it before going forward. There were some hiccups after that. First, I cannot just install the gen kernel. I found that I didn't install all the firmwares in need. There was a no source code error reported in the console. After some Googling, I found that I need to accept the license in the make file before I can install all the firmwares that gen kernel needs. Then I encountered another issue that Gen Kernel wouldn't let me go into the configuration manual when I issue the make manual command. It is complaining that there is no Linux to execute under the folder of user source. I was spending around 30 minutes on this and I was so into it that I forgot to record my screen. And it was eventually solved by going into the manual customization section and install the source kernel. After that, I can go into the gen kernels menu. Here, I promise I'm not customizing anything. 
I was just making sure that ButterFS was turned on before the compilation. After a good night's sleep and some procrastination, next morning I found out the compilation finished without any error. Then I started some final touches before the first reboot. Mounting the root partition in FS tab. And for network, I directly went into the network manager setup page for the simplicity. Installed some recommended tool like system log, cron, and butterfs support. Nothing major. I didn't run into any issue following the grub2 guide either. Reboot was successful after that. But I didn't know that Emerge Word would not install GNOME automatically, so I was faced with a terminal after my reboot. If you're doing the same thing, keep that in mind before your initial reboot. When I tried to set up GNOME, I still didn't know it was not installed automatically. So when I issued the emerge command again for GNOME, and it finished super fast, my mind was default to think that it was already done without questioning the fact that there might be some tweaking needed before I can install it properly. I was banging my head instead trying to figure out why is the display manager goes to XDM all the time after setting GDM as the default. I read the Gentoo wiki page back and forth without any progress because it says GDM is included inside the GNOME package. So after a long session, I finally realized I didn't even have GNOME. I changed the make flag according to the emerge suggestion I finally saw the yes and no question. While waiting for it to be done, I found out I can also override the video cards to AMD GPU only. I made several changes to the make file and issued the change use emerge commands several times after that. Now I'm pretty comfortable with changing the flags. The other thing I found pretty useful in Gen2 is that when you agree to let Emerge to change some settings for you, you need to run the command called etc update and merge the auto-generated configuration. Otherwise, you won't be able to go ahead with the emerging. Gen2 will just keep generating new configuration files for you every time you try to install the same package. It was not in the official installation manual, so I just want to add it here. Finally, GDM and GNOME are coming along together. Overall, it took me less than 24 hours to finish everything, including eating, sleeping, and procrastinating. That is one third of the time it took me last year, and this time I didn't need to consult any YouTube videos. There are only some Googling and DuckDuckGo needed here and there. So let's answer the ultimate question I couldn't explicitly answer last time. How hard is it to install Gen2 for the new users? Well, it depends. And technically, it is not my first time anymore. But anyways, it can be quite hard if you took my first approach, changing a lot of stuff from make flags, kernel, all the way to NVIDIA before even seeing the desktop environment. But at least now you can do so with their official GUI live CD, which is much better than typing the commands reading from a tiny phone screen. There is a bigger chance you might fail, but it provides a ton of fun. However, installing Gen2 can be quite easy, like I did this time. I realized that Gen Kernel will actually enable Navu, the open source NVIDIA driver for you by default. So even if you have an NVIDIA card, you might be able to survive. Just don't change anything if it is absolutely necessary you will have much easier life. And in the end, I want to add this. After getting nagged by the internet people last time, I did some reflection. First, I want to say thank you for nagging because I have at most five to six close friends I talk to frequently in real life. Despite the fact most of them are software engineers, none of them uses Linux on their personal machine as a daily driver. I don't want to be the only a-hole pushing them to use Linux all the time as I still want to be friends with them. And here, I already have 500 subscribers, which means I have 100 times more people already to talk Linux with. 
So thank you for watching and please keep nagging me. You're actually encouraging me to do better. Second, I realized I didn't do anything wrong last time. No one says you need to do everything in a default way the first time you install Gentoo. It is absolutely fine to tweak it and fail like me. The core thing with Linux is to have fun. Also that users are free to do whatever they want to the system. Isn't that the thing you fall in love with Linux in the first place? At least it is for me. And finally, I realized in one of my favorite TV shows, Top Gear, not called The Grand Tour, that those three hosts have had years of experience with cars. They're still doing stupid shits on TV and people love it. What I'm saying here is that people can never be absolutely right all the time. So at least let them have fun doing what they love. Okay? And that is all for this video. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.